Hello, my name is Guo Freeman. I am presenting our paper titled "A Tale of Creativity and Struggles: Team Practices for Bottom-Up Innovation in Virtual Game Jams." On behalf of my co-author Nathan Magnus, game jams are intense and time-sensitive online or face-to-face -face game creation events where a digital game is developed in a relatively short time frame, typically fourteen eight. To seventy-two hours, exploring, giving design constraints and end results are shared publicly. They have increasingly become emerging sites where non-professional game developers, amateurs, and hobbyists engage in bottom-up technological innovation by collaboratively designing and developing more creative and novel digital products. In this sense, game jams directly reflect and support the bottom-up innovation model, which means end users of products and services are increasingly able to innovate for themselves. However, while bottom-up technological innovation has become an important research agenda in CCW, previous studies tend to focus on innovative practices such as DIY making, hackerspaces and fab labs, hackathons, and technology startups. Other technology communities as potential innovation sites and mechanisms for bottom-up innovation, such as game jams, are understudied. In addition, as creativity-focused teamwork have been considered essential to the traditional top-down, manufacturer-centric model, how these emerging sites and mechanisms for bottom-up innovation support nuanced team practices and dynamics still remain unclear. Therefore, in this paper, we explore the following research questions. How do game developers conduct team practices in virtual game jams, and what is the unique role of virtual game jams in game developers' efforts to innovate game design and development? To collect data, we conducted twenty-eight semi-structured, in-depth interviews with indie game developers who had participated in any virtual game jams in the past twelve months. Indie game developers have been considered an emerging workforce to innovate game development outside the mainstream gaming industry, and as frequent participants in many game jams. Studying virtual game jams that focus on indie game developers and hobbyists, therefore, would shed light on how these events shift the innovation space from the bottom up. Our findings have two highlights. First, we identified strategies that game developers use to contact team practices in virtual game jams. Second, we explore how engaging in virtual game jams affect game developers' technological innovation in various ways. In our study, most participants note that attending a virtual game jam alone might not be productive, and they tend to form small teams, such as three to five people, to engage in virtual game jams. They especially highlight four strategies to conduct team practices for innovating game design development in virtual game jams, including effectively assigning roles through computer-mediated methods, conducting fast-paced practices sharing and management, achieving a balance between text communication and voice chat, and exchanging diverse forms of social and technological support. Such as technical support, constructive criticism, and emotional support. In our study, twenty-six out of the twenty-eight participants regard their engagement in virtual game jams as generally positive and beneficial. However, they also raise several concerns, considering virtual game jams as a double-edged sword for their technological innovation. First, many participants note that virtual game jams significantly facilitated their technological innovation because these jams broaden participation in game development, including providing a broad interest to game development, enhancing public visibility and diversity of indie game development, and fostering a sense of networked innovative community. However, our participants also point out that virtual game jams may hinder their innovation, especially with regard to the difficulty to complete a scalable prototype and emerging legal and copyright concerns. 
For example, for many developers, a concern is that engaging in virtual game jams may only lead to small scale, somehow lower quality and unmarkable end products. In this sense, virtual game jams themselves may not facilitate these developers' innovative practices because only making small scale products is not considered sustainable. Since most participants attend virtual game jams that apply an open intellectual property ownership, how to approach and manage copyright also becomes a central concern. Participants feel that there is a lack of copyright policies and regulations at the national level to address this gray area. This also seems to be a universal issue across different countries. To discuss our findings, we want to highlight how virtual team practices can be supported and facilitated in a creative and innovative context that has not been widely studied in this CW. So, Virtual game jams, indie game developers and hobbyists in Denver to make their technological practices more visible to the general public. And they strive to offer social support to community members in need. We also highlight two rising tensions for innovation in game jams. Tensions between the play nature of virtual game jams for indies and hobbyists and developers' intention to create complete and remarkable products, and tensions between team practices for innovation and protecting one's individual work. Grounded on game developers' four strategies to conduct teamwork in virtual game jams, we also highlight design implications to facilitate virtual team practices for bottom-up innovation, such as design affordance for role identification and shared goals development, design affordances for fast-paced communication and multiple modalities of communication, and design affordances for prototyping in game jams. In conclusion, our study has shown that virtual game jams play a unique role in promoting bottom-up technological innovation. We have also printed out the unique challenges they may bring in. Therefore, we contribute to existing CCW literature on virtual teams and computer mediated collaboration by shedding light on how newly emerging innovation sites such as virtual game gems further shift today's innovation model from the bottom up. We especially highlight the importance of coordinately conducting complex and fast-paced practices among remote team members, learning and sharing high-tech skills, creating tangible and deliverable products, and reducing the cost of participating in innovation to promote bottom-up innovation. We also point out the rising tensions between play and innovation, as well as between team practices and individual intellectual protection in virtual game games, which reflects the potential risk of exploitation in the nature of collaboration in bottom-up innovation. We want to thank our participants and the National Science Foundation for supporting this research. Thank you for watching.